The main finding in this study is that people who drink large amounts, often binging on the weekends, 18, 30 drinks, uh, those people have a greater ability to consume acetic acid or, or acetate in their brains than light drinkers or non-drinkers. When you drink alcohol, your liver converts the alcohol pretty rapidly, it begins to convert it into acetate. And it produces more acetate than it can use, so that acetate spills out into the blood. Once it's in the blood, it circulates through your body and it can go to your brain. The potential harm of acetate going into the brain is actually threefold. Uh, acutely, so in the very short term, we know that when acetate is oxidized in the liver, it promotes inflammation. And people who drink heavily can accumulate fat and on their liver, it makes them insulin resistant, it promotes, eventually it can promote liver failure. Well, if it's oxidized in the brain in large quantities, it may also be inflammatory in the brain. That's something we still need to investigate. When people go for a day or two with, without eating enough, and then they drink, in, acutely their blood sugar can drop. The brain relies almost entirely on sugar for its energy needs. And if someone uh, is drinking, uh, drinking alcohol and gets acetate and can get energy from that acetate in their brain, <clears throat> they won't be aware of it consciously, but their brain is going to learn that they can get energy from acetate. Uh, another potential harm in this is that when you oxidize acetate, you form adenosine as a product. Now adenosine is a chemical that um, makes you feel sleepy. It's sedating. Imagine that very heavy drinkers have a, twice the ability to consume acetate as a light drinker. So they're likely to be making more adenosine inside their brains than the light drinkers do. And their brain is going to adapt to that. And in someone who's dependent then, we predict that the adenosine is going to be something they, they go, become accustomed to. And when they stop drinking, say so if they decide they're going to stay sober, they withdraw from the alcohol. But that acetate can stay elevated for 24 hours after they stop drinking. And then they'll start withdrawing from the acetate and the adenosine. And the implications of these results for detoxification are that given that an, an alcoholic is likely to have uh, adapted to the presence of an acetate in the brain, and then when they stop drinking, the acetate goes away and they feel withdrawal, there's, there's an, an urge to, to begin drinking again to replace the alcohol and replace the acetate. There's potential that acetate could be used as a treatment um, for alcohol dependence, for people to help people. Nothing's going to make it easy, but it may help people when they go through withdrawal in addition to the other measures that we already take. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that people go start drinking vinegar so they can detox. That wouldn't be safe. Um, but this is a line of research we want to investigate, and if it's successful, we need to find a way to deliver it cheaply and practically.